Today on The Question Is with Anthony Portentino, we're discussing art in California. Yep, public, private, schools, you name it. It's on display everywhere and at a theater near you. But are we doing enough to preserve and nurture it for future generations? Let's find out on The Question Is with Anthony Portentino. <laughs> Today on The Question Is with Anthony Portentino, my guests are absolutely terrific. Elisa Glickman is the executive director of Glendale Arts, where she runs, funds, and champions the great and historic Alex Theater. Even when the state took away the money, she said the show must go on. From jazz to drama, the Alex Theater is the place to go. And Carrie Brown, she just wants to bring arts to all. Carrie is the president of the board of Burbank Arts for All, a unique public school arts foundation in beautiful downtown Burbank. Jay Leno may have left, but Carrie and the foundation members are there to continue to bring arts education and opportunity to the children of the Burbank Unified School District. I've seen firsthand just how great the work of these two terrific nonprofits is, so let's ask the question. Elisa, how are you? Good morning. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me today. Thanks for being here. Tell us about Glendale Arts. What are you doing? It's so exciting. We we actually do quite a bit. So Glendale Arts' primary role is to manage the historic Alex Theater. The Alex is an 88-year-old venue, and as you mentioned, it was a redevelopment project. Mm -hmm. um, and, and over the last couple of years, we've actually expanded our mission beyond the walls of the Alex. We built an arts and community website. Uh, that gives artists and nonprofits an opportunity to promote their events, both mm -hmm. on our social media and website. Mm -hmm. We have a GA Tickets program that brings our ticketing services, again, outside the Alex Theater so that nonprofits and art organizations in the region can benefit. And then we have a GA Partners program, which connects businesses to the arts community and arts patrons. So we're a pretty busy little place. You are. And later I'm going to ask you to tell me how you landed Chelsea Handler to do a talk with <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow, but we'll get to the programming Absolutely. later. Absolutely. Carrie, Burbank Art for all is exciting you bring arts to kids when the state really isn't helping you do it tell us a little bit about what your nonprofit foundation is doing okay um, the Burbank Arts for All Foundation um, our mission is to ensure that all students in Burbank public schools receive equal access to a quality arts education um, we're really guided by the Burbank Arts for All uh, plan that was implemented by the Burbank Unified School District um, and our foundation was formed in 2006 to provide supplemental funding to help make that happen. Because as you mentioned, there's not been a lot coming from the state. And um, we have now, since our inception in 2006, we have brought over $228,000 into the schools from our foundation. Mm -hmm. um, but we've had a lot of matching programs where the local PTAs and the booster organizations and the school district have delivered matching funds. So we've at least tripled that. You're leveraging the money yes. that you, you earn from private donations to, yes. to do even a bigger service. And that's what we really want to do. And it's, you know, you get the grant applications. We do it twice a year and they come in from the elementary schools and the middle schools and the high schools. And it breaks your heart sometimes when you see that a teacher's just asking for $500 for art supplies right mm -hmm. um, but at the same time you have larger programs that are thousands of dollars to upgrade auditoriums right. and um, integrate arts programs into what you would consider traditional courses economics and geometry and PE so um, it's really rewarding to see the impact that these grants have on our students absolutely and I like the fact that you started with the impact on the classroom too because you know at the beginning of the year you walk through Office Depot or Staples and you actually see teachers you know, buying art supplies because mm -hmm. the school district isn't doing that and yeah. to have an organization do that. And um, the school district you do this for is a very large and diverse school district with several high schools, but a strong emphasis on the art. So it's a really great fit as far as the community goes as well. Well, it is. You know, the LA County Arts Commission started the Arts for All initiative um, 
pre-2006, and Burbank was one of the first school districts to come on board. And in order to be an Arts for All district, you the district had to make commitments to fund arts education. And Burbank, gratefully, and we're so excited that it is held up as a model district in many ways. Um, our school board um, is very much in support of arts education and arts integration in our classrooms. It's not an add-on. It's not a would like to have. Mm -hmm. It's right. a must have. Right. And um, especially in you know the 21st century economy that everyone's talking about, creativity and collaboration and communication and critical thinking, all of those go back to arts education. Right. So um, our district wants to do more than we can because of the limited funding, but unlike other districts in the state and in the country where they've just cut programming to arts to all together, right. you know, our district has a dedicated arts coordinator at the district level right. um, and arts, vibrant arts programs in our schools, and we're determined to keep them and expand them. Right, well, one of the common themes that we're gonna hear is that as funding has gotten uh, cut statewide and has people have quote unquote made their priorities uh, unfortunately and for California in particular being that the arts is such an important part of the culture the economy why we're all here from other parts of the country we all came here because this is the golden state and obviously with you know the Alex Theater and Glendale Arts we saw how when redevelopment was mm -hmm. taken away from the city of Glendale it threatened the very existence of that 88 year old theater mm -hmm. How did you, I mean, it was sort of all hands on deck and the community rallying. How did that, you know, all of a sudden the rug was pulled out and there was even a threat of it being sold to, to a private hands. How did you navigate that? Well, and, and unfortunately that threat still exists. I mean, one of our number one challenges right now is when they re eliminated redevelopment in 2012, um, the ownership of the venue w was up in the air. Right. So because the state did wisely write into the legislation through the amendment process, the ability to continue to fund contractual obligations. And under our management agreement, we were, Glendale Arts was a, essentially a contractual obligation. Right. We were able to continue and manage the venue with the ongoing funding that was promised to us in our, in our contract. The challenge, however, is that redevelopment was set to sunset in the downtown area in 2015, and Glendale Arts was working towards what we called our track towards self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to get back on that track when the ownership of the venue is still very much up in the air. So our plans for self-sufficiency really had to shift and change very quickly. And what we would started to do is really focus on our business partnerships and mm -hmm. how do we bring um, a different caliber of entertainment. How do we partner with various schools and various other nonprofit organizations to increase the type of performances that we have at the Alex so that our earned income levels continue to increase, increase. while we're still trying to find our way through our, our contributed income. Now the city's been helping you navigate the, the sort of the, the morass. The with city the has been incredible. Right. I mean through the economic development department, um, through the successor agency, which is primarily the city council, other city staff, um, our state legislators, and, and as you mentioned, the community, everyone has really rallied behind the Alex Theater. Again, the challenge is, is that because some of the legislation is a little um, ambiguous. Right. And because. So a lot of interpretation. Exactly. And because contractual obligations. Um, prohibit us from making certain decisions or certain moves while everyone's supported we're still in that limbo period. Well one of the exciting things that you are doing during this time the the programming is very diverse and exciting mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. I mentioned you know, I mean you're literally having a conversation with Chelsea Handler and Gwyneth mm -hmm. Paltrow uh, what two weeks after having Arturo Sandoval and Big there, Bad Voodoo Daddy and Big Bad Voodoo Daddy um, and I, you know, I went to the Arturo Sandoval show, and mm. it was sold out. Yeah. I mean, it, fourteen hundred people had a wonderful time, and people are still talking about it. Yeah. So, how are you able to attract such wonderful programming? Do you have a? Part, you're you're the CEO. Mm -hmm. um, how is the structure set up? Uh, sure. You know, because you are a nonprofit, so you have we to keep are. your overhead down. Sure. But yet, you also have to fill up fourteen hundred seats. So, how are you doing that? Well, we we have a variety of different combinations. Of we do about one hundred and eighty dates a year. Some of which are straight rentals of the venue. Some of which are co 
uh, productions or co-partnerships between Glendale Arts and the production entity, and some we produce all on our own. So um, some examples of that, the Arturo Sandoval event, which is to raise money for the Arturo Sandoval Institute, the Glendale Educational Foundation, which while we don't have an arts for all like Burbank, the Education Foundation has identified the arts as one of their, one primary, of their primary funding, right. and Glendale Arts. Um, so that partnership with Arturo, he came, he performed, we raised money for those three organizations, so all of that money then goes back into the community, and we produced about 25% of the event, which meant my team, my crew, um, put all of the, the production things together, and mm -hmm. we handled marketing and ticket sales. Uh, for the Big Bad Voodoo Daddy event, that was actually the Verdugo Woodlands Foundation, couple of the parents, their kids go to Glendale schools. Uh, I'm sorry, a couple of the musicians, their kids go to Glendale schools. They volunteered their time and their services to perform that night, and all of the proceeds going back to the various foundations that fund education. So one tip or one idea is to work in concert with other nonprofits, mm -hmm. bringing in partners to the to the game. Absolutely. I mean, you're sharing the proceeds, obviously, to the different nonprofits, but you're also working in concert to enhance the program. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that, and, and then the live talks, which you're very fond mm. of with Chelsea and, and uh, Gwyneth, um, that's just a, a partnership. He's a for profit entity that does these live talk conversations throughout the city. Mm -hmm. And we just picked up the phone and called him and said, What would it take to bring your events to the Alex Theater? And we hatched a deal that was beneficial to both. Very and cool. because of it, we've brought. Um, conversations with Neil Gaiman, Phil Jackson, Chelsea, as you mentioned. Uh, we have Malcolm Gladwell coming in April. So w that's been an extraordinary So the bottom line is who, who needs the West Side when we've got you don't the anymore. Alex Theater in, exactly. in Glendale, California? And uh, that's one of the things that ha was really our positioning goal over the cool. last four years. So it's become a destination. Carrie, in a sense, Burbank Arts for All is also uniquely situated in that you have Warner Brothers, you have Disney, you have a strong entertainment presence within the Burbank Unified School District. And it seems like you're making a lot out of that and you're working in concert with the studios. Could you share a couple of the unique sort of partnerships that you've done? Yes, and, and you know, it, it really is a partnership. And just like um, you were saying, it's, it's the community, it's the businesses, it's the parents, it's the school district. It, we couldn't do this without any one of those groups contributing. But the Burbank Arts for All Foundation really owes its beginnings to Warner Brothers and to Disney. They really stepped forward. Warner Brothers gave um, very important seed money to get us started um, and has continued to be um, a wonderful partner to us and to the school district. Um, so, you know, we have those relationships, but also, you know, it's, it's bigger than the big studios in town. Um, in order for this foundation, in order for our students to benefit, we need everyone coming to the table because this is the future workforce. You know, and in, in here in, you know, Southern California, you know, we have the Otis Report on the creative economy and one in seven jobs are in the creative industries. Right. And it, it, Knowing that in Burbank, you know, as the media capital of the world with Glendale being right there arm in arm, our schools need to be preparing right. these students to work in these creative industries, perform in this creative, and perform at the Alex <laughs> Theater or, or do a live talk at the Alex Theater. Exactly. And um, so, you know, we, and we always are looking for creative ways to bring those partnerships. We recently had a Creative Circles Forum, which, you know, for that, that's really a program that we put on. It's not a fundraiser for us, and it's a conversation where we bring together, you know, the businesses in town with professionals in town, with teachers, with, you know, college professors from Woodbury University, and we had um, someone from Photochem who um, is a vice president there, but his degree was in theater. Wow. Yeah. And, um, it, and, it, it, and all the conversations always come back to how important arts education has been to each of them individually and how they've seen it in their students, in their coworkers, in their everyday life. Now at John Burroughs High School, um, yes. obviously Warner Brothers had a big role to play in the theater remodel, I, w I understand. I guess their technicians came and consulted with helping the theater be as 
state of the art as it is, but also the, the music program. What TV show did that inspire? Well, you're talking about show choir. And, mm. um, you know, I, I grew up in a small town in Western Kentucky, and everyone in my town bled blue for the Kentucky Wildcats basketball. So coming into Burbank, it was shocking to see how much this community supports not only all the arts, but show choir. Um, right. And the Glee show, um, Bur Burroughs program was one of the inspirations for that oh. show. They actually shot the pilot at our high school. Right. Their choir room on that show was modeled after ours. Um, and you know, my daughter is part of that program, so I, I'm, I'm living, eating, and breathing show choir these days. But we have at both high schools in Burbank, Burbank High and Burroughs High, these tremendous programs with you know, at Burroughs, we have 250 kids in there, right. and it's a, it's a, it's just amazing to see how hard these kids work and what a difference it makes. Well, I had the benefit to see the show last Sunday at Burroughs, and it was terrific. When we come back on the question is with Anthony Portentino, we're going to talk, continue to talk big picture about the arts, but also some of the uh, small ways and interesting and creative ideas that these two nonprofits actually raise money that can be helpful in other cities around the state. So thank you, and we'll be back. Who needs this modern world? I can live just fine out here without the road rage and boy bands. Of course, I might miss my Charter HD with football on ESPN and Walking Dead on AMC. ESPN and AMC. And, well, Shark Week on Discovery HD. But that's all. AMC, ESPN, Discovery, TBS, and Comedy Central HD. But that's it. Except for HBO HD. Charter now has over 100 HD channels and more brilliant HD shows on demand than ever. We're back on The Question Is with Anthony Portentino, and we are talking about art in California, both from a regional perspective to theater to schools, and I've got two terrific guests, so thank you again for being here. We started off, or we left off, talking a little bit about Glee as, as it relates to Burbank, but there's a Glee connection to the Alex Theater as well. Absolutely. For the first two seasons of Glee, they actually shot their regional finals um, for the show at the Alex Theater. I think we were an Indianapolis school, and then the second year we were a different school. So the Alex uh, also plays a role in that, that production. Well, that sort of underscores how important it is to keep filming in mm -hmm. California. We know it is a significant, important part of our economy and we wish our legislators, my former colleagues, well because I think we all agree that the, the tax incentive mm -hmm. um, should be expanded and should be made permanent. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a big piece of our business and it saves us during our summer and down periods to get a production in the theater. Right. Um, so when we've done probably a hundred TV shows, commercials, and films over the last 15 years. And your family too, was working actors in the family, you'd yes. like to keep them home versus on location, I would imagine. <laughs> it would be great. My husband is an actor, and yes, I would love it if he could work closer to home instead of flying all over the place. Not every now and then it's nice. I was gonna say, though when I was in the film business, my wife liked it when I went on <laughs> location, but that's a whole different uh, <laughs> subject for another show. Um, but uh, there's been attempts, because of the economic benefit, the arts, you know, not film arts, but mm -hmm. the creative arts bring to the California economy. The, the numbers really show it's an, it in and of itself is an important piece of the economy. And there's been some attempts mm -hmm. to, to divert some tax revenue to help support the arts. Um, were you involved in advocacy for that or, or supporting it or how, to, how does that relate to, to the Alex? Sure, uh, we've certainly uh, spoken with our legislature both locally as well as nationally uh, to encourage, you know, the, the Americans for the Arts have done an arts and economic prosperity study for over the last 15 years and the last one that came out they based on the data that was provided, um, realize that in California alone, almost $300 million um, goes back into the state coffers because of tax revenue that's directly related to arts-related spending. Right. Um, and as a state, we invest $3.8 million of that back into arts programming. It equates to roughly 11 cents per person per capita, wow. which is not a great return on our arts dollar investment. And for us arts administrators, arts advocates, it's really very frustrating. Now the assembly and the state have created some emergency um, pieces of legislation to increase funding on a state level. They have their arts license plate program that they're starting to right. reactivate and relaunch. Um, but again, the challenge still continues that we don't get the same amount of the pie based on how much we put in. Right, and, and the frustration is, is it is actually a good investment 
mm -hmm. for the state. And years ago, I went to a, a seminar where they brought in artists from LA County and they were saying, you know, everybody out there is politically active. Mm -hmm. And by sheer numbers, the number of people who work in creative arts, mm -hmm. it's a significant percentage of the population, but yet not an organized mm -hmm. political, mm -hmm. I guess it's the nature of being an artist. You sort of want to be left alone with your <laughs> paint and your model and your landscape, and you're not thinking about going to the Capitol. But uh, it is a challenge to get the greater arts community galvanized from a grassroots perspective, mm -hmm. um, just by the nature of the individual spirit of it. But uh, it really should be advocating more for arts program and obviously again we know where does it start it starts in the classroom with that child who may not want to do geometry but may want to be in the high school play and you know again when we think globally the challenges we're going to do a show later on the the challenges facing teenagers and you know we see teenage suicides we see you know kids migrate to behaviors that they shouldn't be doing because you know, globally, we're not giving them a lot of the creative outlets that we used to do back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. In my case, the 50s, and in your case, the 80s, when you guys were in <laughs> school. Yeah. Um, I'm a politician, but it's all, and I never lie. <laughs> um, but if you could talk about how you feel the student reacts to Burbank Arts for All. I mean, there's such excitement that I see, but do you, see the students trickling, feeling the, the, the emphasis that you put on their well-being? Do you think there, there's a connection there as I, well? I think so. You know, we um, have a wonderful director of development named Trina Pritchard, and right. she joined us a couple of years ago. And um, one of the great things that Trina has done is she's worked very hard to measure our impact. Mm -hmm. And so she really communicates, she educates our board, she educates the community on what a difference we're making in the lives of these children. And so, you know, we see photos, we go and visit the classrooms, we do a, a wonderful video every year for our gala fundraiser where we interview some of these students. And there's not a, a dry eye in the house, including myself. Right. Um, and y you really get to see how it changes their lives um, and helps them communicate. And that that's what brought me into this. I wasn't an artist growing up, um, but I competed in speech and debate team. Mm -hmm. And for me, learning how to find your voice and having the confidence to speak with your voice is what the arts does right. uh, for people. And, and to go back to something that you said, you know, uh, there are tremendous amounts of studies that look at the arts and their impact on education. And while a student may not love geometry, there is evidence to show that if you participate in the arts, you actually will do better in math right. and science. So they may not enjoy it, but they may secretly be doing better simply because they participated in arts-related activities. Right. And we know that music study before mm -hmm. the age of 13 changes the, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> those children who have had music lessons before 13 actually have a mm -hmm. higher test scores, IQ, than those students Dropout rates are lower right. in schools where there are active arts programs. I mean, it's, again and again, there are statistics that show how important it is in building community right. within a school. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think are the challenges in the folks who are not in the arts? What do, you, what do you think? I mean, are there challenges to the message that we need to overcome? Well, I think there is, um, certainly in the community we faced, um, and you, you may have faced this in Glendale as well, you know, a lot of people who grew up in Burbank, we're lucky. There's a lot of families who, sitting in a PTA meeting, they went to that school, and right. their child has the same teacher. That's one of the things I love about the Burbank community. But they had arts programs when they went to school there. They had librarians. They had right. art teachers and music teachers and instrumental music in elementary school. A lot of them weren't aware that these things were lost until they had children they in had schools children. themselves. Mm -hmm. right. So it's really educating the community on what has been lost and what we're trying to reclaim right. um, and not just assuming that it's the way it's always been. Well, one thing that you guys do that I think other communities can duplicate, I mean, it's a, it, in a sense you have a lot of artists, but the Secret Art Show isn't just yeah. about the Disney animators who no. do it. It's one of the most fun events I've ever been to in the 4,000 events I go to. I'm going to it every year. <laughs> and I got the Morgan Freeman 
painting that a Burbank <laughs> art student did that was then featured in the media. I was so cool. I got the one that was featured. But tell us about the Secret Art Show. What is that all about? You know, the Secret Art Show for us, <clears throat> uh, it was our first time going out with it in the fall. We had a couple of, of board members, Karen Broderick and Caroline Solberg, who really wanted to make this happen. It's a lot of work to bring this together. Yeah. What was exciting about it is we had invited artists, students, you know, community members, professional artists, um, celebrities to make art on four by six cards and they sign the back. And it all goes on display. We had over 600 pieces of art. Every piece of art was $40, a $40 donation. And you didn't find out who you bought until, until after, you, after bought you bought it. And so, um, you know, some people bought Conan O'Brien drawings. Huh. And, you know, we had a teacher who brought some of his students to the event. And afterwards, he sent a note to us saying, how impactful it was for that student to see someone purchase mm -hmm. their work right. of art. And, and we didn't, you know, that was the impact we didn't even think about right. when we first started the program. And um, it was a great event. We brought in a lot of the Burbank Art Association members, so it engaged artists in our community who maybe weren't really involved with our schools. And um, it, it, was, it was such an exciting event. Well, the Morgan Freeman piece that I bought was done by a student. Yeah. And then I got the uh, Frankenstein piece that was done by an animator. And it was really cool because he burnt the edges Ooh. of the paper. Yeah. And so it actually had extra. It was real. I'm going back. So good. Um, it's very cool. Now, you guys do a lot of unique fundraising, too. You start uh, the dining. That's coming up soon. Um, oh, the Taste of Downtown. Taste Glenda. of Downtown and sort of uh, the Alex becomes the hub for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it incorporates all the restaurants sure. in in the in and, the fundraising. And more importantly, it benefits another local nonprofit organization, right. which is Glendale Healthy Kids, right. which does extraordinary um, work for um, the healthcare needs of um, low-income students. But uh, and they utilize our ticketing services and, right. and and all those other things. So I think the underlying theme that you see here is when you start to, as an arts organization, partner with. Um, other arts organizations, other nonprofits, other businesses, then you start to change the perception and the dialogue about the impact that arts have on the broader community. I mean, we've spent the last couple of years really beating that message home that arts are really cr help to create a vibrant economic economy. They make you feel good, they give you courage and inspiration, but they also do all these other things. And as that message started to really trick, uh, to get out there in the community, people started to come to us right. and ask us, hey, what can we do? Um, and I think that's really changed the perception of, of the impact that arts can make. Now, you're applying for some state grants. I guess the State Arts mm -hmm. Council every year puts out some money mm -hmm. that's available, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. In years past, they didn't, but mm -hmm. it's the, with the economy and with Prop 30 passing and the state doing better, mm -hmm. there are going to be some competitive art grants mm -hmm. that are going to be available for arts nonprofits around the state, you're going to get in the queue for that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're really fortunate in L.A. County to have such a strong uh, Los Angeles Arts and Culture Commission. Mm -hmm. But on a state level, funding has been a little bit precarious. Grant opportunities right. haven't been as available as in years past. But this year, uh, actually the month of March, they have a few grant opportunities that they're making available statewide. Um, so there's a couple um, that we're going to pursue, and we've identified about five to six local Glendale-based arts nonprofits to really partner with on these projects uh, to, to, to enhance the arts ecosystem, as, as it's now been termed, uh, to bring as many organizations under one banner so that it really enriches what we're putting out there for the community. Where do you see the Alex Theater in five years? Bigger and better. Um, so we just are about ready to finish a 6,600-square-foot uh, expansion project, and we're hoping that there are some uh, areas around the theater that we might be able to redevelop to enhance the Alex Theater's offerings. Um, mostly in the next five years, we're going to secure the ownership of the theater, either on the city level or hopefully Glendale Arts, and then figure out what kind of programming we want to do to, to fill it and um, help bring more people into the community. Fantastic. Well, I'll buy a ticket. You heard some great stories today about two wonderful arts nonprofits. You know, we see art when we're out and about. We go to the theater. We go to the movies. We uh, who's not watching House of Cards on Netflix these <laughs> days? It touches our lives every day. But 
it has to be funded, it has to be done well, and as we heard from Burbank Arts for All, we got to start with our young people and, and keep mm -hmm. their inspirations thriving. So thank you very much for being on the show today. We'll be back with the question is on another topic uh, next month. Thanks.